The cooler months are upon us. Maybe you're fishing, maybe you're not. Maybe your water is completely frozen. Maybe your bodies of water is still accessible. Here in Texas, I'm still fishing, but even here things do slow down a little bit just with the holiday season. It's also a good time and a good reminder to slow down and clean some of your gear, some of your equipment. And today we're gonna to talk about how to clean your reels. My name is Jeremy Francis. I run a channel and a page called Fishing Lone Star. We'd we'll love for you to give me a follow. But right here on the Monster Bass channel today, we're going to talk about how to clean your reels. Now, I like to do things easy and simple. So this is not going to be a video about completely tearing this thing down to 4,000 parts, cleaning every one of them, putting it all back together. No, uh, I've actually never done that with any of my reels. I've got probably 25 plus reels. I've never done that in four or five years. Never had a problem with any of them, but I do keep good care of them. And I'll show you how I do that in a very simplistic way today. Let me turn the camera around. We'll use the deck of my boat as a workstation and show you how to easily clean your reels. All right, let's talk about the setup here and some of the things you're gonna need. First, uh, on your line, you'll see right here some black electric tape. You're gonna wanna tape that down just so your line stays out of the way when you take the spool out in a minute. So I'll show you that. Next, I really like using the Lucas oil here. Uh, it's just something I've always used for years. I really like it, like the spout on it. Um, I do use the Super Duty Lose Casting Reel Grease. You'll see here, we'll talk about where to apply that. And one thing I've, I've come to really like here is the cleaner here by Lose. This is just more for the outside to remove some residue and dirt, all right? So we'll use all three of these here in our cleaning. All right, now I do wanna call something out before we begin. I was going to show you my frogging setup um, because as you can see, right there around the guide, it gets really gunked up and dirty. I'm still gonna clean the part of this that I can reach, but let me tell you why I did not choose this one. Do you see how full my spool is on my, on my um, I'm sorry, how full the line is on the spool? I really like to fill up my reels. I like them really full, but this one, if you can see right here, is maybe a little too full. So when I go to pull this spool out, the line's gonna catch and uh, it's gonna cause a huge mess. So make sure you're using a reel that you have some clearance on your spool. I've just filled this one up too much. So we're gonna clean this one in a minute. I'll show you how to still do that. Um, but uh, for now, we're gonna set that one aside. And instead, we're gonna use uh, this Lose KVD as an example. Uh, you can see the outside of it's kind of dirty. You can see uh, right in here, there's some dirt. We're gonna add some oil to some of the bearings and uh, clean this thing up. So let's get started. All right, so first, now while I'm using a loose reel, you can use others. Uh, this, is, this is just the one I'm gonna show you. Most of these, reel, most of these reels are made the same way. Uh, so you can apply these same things to any of your reels. Um, and I did forget to mention, at least for the loose, you're gonna need a small screwdriver because in a minute we're gonna access this small port right here. It does require a, uh, a screwdriver, so we're gonna access that in a minute. So you will need a small screwdriver for that. But first and foremost, let's take the cover off here. So we're gonna pull back this pin and then slide our cover off. That's how you access the brake settings. Here on this one, we're gonna set that aside and then uh, our spool should just fall right out. Okay, so first and foremost, we're gonna take the spool out. Now, a couple of things we're gonna notice. Uh, we're gonna put a drop of oil down in here for that component. We're gonna put a drop of oil right here on these uh, bearings. We're gonna actually take apart this piece right here. This is our tension knob. So we're just gonna back that out. It is a clickable or an audible you know, clicking tension knob. So I'm just gonna back that off and you'll see the reason why is because there's actually some bearings right there too okay so we're gonna we're gonna oil each of those we'll set our parts there uh, and then there's also a bearing right in there that we're gonna place some oil so let's do uh, before we get to the oiling though now that I have this kind of broken apart or at least the spool out I can reach uh, the worm gear and the guide a little bit easier let's go ahead and hit that with our cleaner before I do though I'm gonna lay a towel down for our workstation Okay, so we got our reel, we got our cover, we got our spool, tension knob, and some Q-tips. Let's go ahead and uh, spray this down. And uh, what we're doing here, especially to the exterior parts, is we're getting a lot of this exterior, 
I guess really dirt and grime off of this thing. So I like to just kind of run my Q-tip right in here. Don't worry, we're gonna come back and uh, provide some oil and grease to this later. Uh, so we're just kind of getting all this dirt and grime and look at just that first swipe at that, all right? Now this is my cranking reel. This isn't even what I would consider one of my dirtier reels, uh, but we're getting a, a lot of stuff off of it already. All right, so I'm just gonna go around the outside here and kind of do the same. We're gonna hit the thumb bar a little bit. We're gonna make sure we get the bottom components, uh, all the parts that kind of touch our rod. I'll come back to the rod in a moment and we'll clean that part too. I'm just gonna kind of get in all these crevices. That cleaner I just used is really helping to break up the dirt and the grime, a lot of that residue that's on there, residue, sorry, uh, that's on there and helping us to uh, get this thing pretty clean and you can see all of that that's coming off already we're making some good progress all right now notice i did not necessarily spray it directly in here because that's where my oil is going to go in a minute i am going to um uh, oil this and re-lubricate re that sorry so i'm not too overly concerned with that uh getting wet or having some cleaner on it uh, again i'll come back and fix that in a minute just going to hit this one more time with a cleaner, make sure I'm getting the top and bottom of all of this. Cause you can see even after my first pass, there's still some more that's coming off. We'll move that over, hit it again. All right, so you can see the outside, we got it pretty wiped down. I'm not really worried yet about all the different spots. We'll come back and hit that at the end. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at so far. Step one, hit it with the cleaner wipe it off in some of those hard to reach places with your q-tips all right step one complete okay now then we've got our oil let's talk about step two now we're going to hit all of the bearings uh in a couple of different places here make sure we get some oil uh this really doesn't take much i kind of put one drop on each side some people just do one drop in general but i'm just going to put one drop right there on that side there on that side okay so that's uh on our on our bearing there uh, on the inside of our side plate, we've got a bearing, so we're gonna put a drop there and there. Okay, we got that. Uh, again, on our tension knob, we've got a bearing or a set of bearings in there. And then one more in here, I like to put kind of down in there just for, just for good measure. Basically, all the parts that are going to turn and move, and then don't forget uh, these kind of gears right here uh, or where your, um, guide runs across your line guide. Uh, I like to provide some oil in there just to kind of keep that running smooth. We'll uh, hit it. And then as I do that, just gonna kind of work that a little bit so you can kind of see your worm gear line guide moving back and forth across there. May hit just one more little dab right in the middle. All right, everything now is uh, pretty nice and smooth. Let's uh, put a couple of those components back together and then I'll show you where I'm going to use the grease for step three. Now, if you're worried about when to use oil and when to use grease, oil, just remember oil for your bearings, grease for your gears. So for this loose reel, let me show you how to use the grease and where to put it right here. All right, so we're gonna turn it over and you'll notice that there's a small port right here. Most reels actually have an easy access port to the gears. So we're just going to open that up, just loosen that screw, let it fall out right there. It's a little one, but we got it. And that's what it looks like when it comes off. Don't lose that, because you'll want to keep that there. Now you'll notice that what that does when you take that off, that actually exposes right here, your gears, okay? You can see them turning as I turn the reel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take just a little bit and we're gonna put just a couple of dabs right in there with our grease. So I'll show you, we're just gonna put a little dab right in there like so. Okay, then we're going to give it a little turn and then put maybe one more dab on this side and then keep turning. Let that kind of work in there real good. Okay, and then uh, just for good measure, I usually put one more little dab. We'll now uh, turn that reel and you'll see the grease is right in there, is now kind of working into all those gears. 
and is, is uh, running really smooth now and tall there. So let's put that uh, kind of cover back on, put our screw back in, and I'll show you, uh, I said three steps, we'll show you one more little thing that I do just at the very end. Okay, now that we got it all pieced back together, this is a very, very beautiful reel, but you'll notice there's still some stuff, some spots. I told you I wasn't gonna worry too much about it because at the very end, I'm gonna hit it one more time once all of our components are covered and in, and then we're gonna use our towel and we're gonna wipe it down really good and get the last little pieces we might've missed off of this beautiful reel. So there you have it. We're all said and done here with this particular reel. I do keep a log in my phone, just the note section of my phone, on uh, which reels I clean and when. And uh, that way I have a record of when's the last time I clean this. So that one's good to go. I am going to take the rod that I was using. You'll see the kind of the reel seat uh, is kind of dirty. So I'll just kind of hit that a couple of times with that cleaner, kind of spritz it off. We'll take the towel again and just kind of wipe it down just so the real seat is nice and clean you can see the dirt that uh, came off of it but that way we've got a nice clean real seat and we can slide our reel right back on there and our setup ready to go now my frogging rod i did tell you that i would like to get this a little cleaned up uh because you can see that uh that line guide in there is pretty gross. So I'm just gonna again hit this with this cleaner, just kind of a little bit of that side, a little bit of that side, a little bit underneath, okay? And then uh, just kind of use my Q-tip, get in there and get some of that gunky stuff off. If, uh, if you're like me, sometimes this is really satisfying just to see some of the crap that comes off of it. My frogging rod is by far, uh, if you look at that, my frogging rod is by far, the dirtiest uh, reel or the reel that gets the dirtiest. So I probably should clean this more than once a year, but let's just be real guys. You get busy, you get on the water and the uh, last thing you wanna do is stop and do any type of cleaning. But uh, you know, it helps, it helps keep things clean, helps keep things nice and uh, helps you get longevity out of your reels. So I'll wipe this one down the exterior. I'll hit um, that, uh, Worm gear again really quickly with some more oil, keep it lubricated, and uh, we'll keep on trucking. This will be the fourth or fifth year in a row now with this frogging reel. It's the one I've probably put through the most, and uh, you know, but it's great. These Super Duties last a long time. Any reel will, especially when you keep, keep uh, really good care of them. All right, check those out. That's why we need to clean our reels. Even if it's just the easy, simple way like I just showed you, it's worth it to keep your gear not only looking good, but performing good. So yeah, looks are one thing, but the performance is what matters. No matter if you're buying expensive reels or inexpensive reels, the point is though, if you take care of your gear, it will take care of you and last a long time. These are the particular cleaning products I was using. You don't necessarily have to use these. There's lots on the market that you can go check out. I will say though, the initial investment, uh, is probably maybe, I don't know, 40 bucks or so, uh, but these will last a long time. This is probably my third year using each of these. And uh, I've still got probably at least another year or two in them. And that's even cleaning roughly 20 to 25 reels per year. So uh, while there may be a little bit of investment up front, they will go a long ways and last you a while as well. So as always, guys, we're here to bring you a bunch of tips, tricks, and videos about how to improve your game with fishing. This particular case just happens to deal with your rod and reel maintenance and how to keep them looking fresh and working great. But make sure you subscribe right here to the Monster Bass channel for more videos and content along the way. Here in Texas, we never stop fishing, so come give me a follow as well on Fishing Lone Star. And get out and go catch a Monster Bass.